My name is Joanna Lewis and my book is called Green Innovation in China, China's Wind Power Industry and the Global Transition to a Low Carbon Economy. Many times when I tell people the title of my book, they say green innovation in China, is China actually doing any green innovation? Um, but actually I think this is a, a story that is, is gradually going to come out. The case that I choose to examine for this book is wind energy and, and this is not because I, I believe that wind energy is going to be uh, you know, the single technology that is going to displace coal in China and, and solve all of China's environmental woes. Um, in fact, uh, wind energy is just one of several uh, low carbon technologies that are going to play an increasingly important role in China going forward. Today, wind energy is actually the third largest source of electricity in China uh, after hydropower and coal. Uh, China actually gets more electricity today uh, in, in uh, 2013 from wind energy than from nuclear energy. Um, and uh, although, of course, there are, uh, there are plans to scale up uh, multiple low-carbon technologies in China, uh, including nuclear energy, including solar energy, and increasingly uh, even natural gas. So um, I think that the case of wind energy is particularly interesting um, because it shows it, how China has been able to take a technology which was, which was initially developed uh, primarily by and for the industrialized world, uh, particularly in the United States and in Denmark uh, in the early 1980s, uh, they've been able to take this technology and really uh, bring it into uh, the Chinese context. Uh, they've been able to set up various technology transfer models uh, and develop uh, several Chinese wind turbine manufacturers, which are now in the, the top 10 of global uh, wind turbine manufacturers worldwide. The early part of the book begins by examining uh, how the the early foreign-owned wind turbine companies that came to China ended up adapting their strategy for the Chinese market. So um, just over a decade ago, the only wind turbines that existed in China had been imported from Denmark, from the United States, from Germany. Um, but as uh, the Chinese government started to uh, put policies in place to really start to scale up the use of wind energy. You saw these firms uh, transition their strategies to uh, manufacturing for the local Chinese market. Um, they didn't necessarily transfer their technology, however, to China. And so what the book examines is really the other partnerships uh, and the other factors that played an important role in how Chinese and wind turbine manufacturers ended up building their own uh, technical capacity. Uh, to, uh, to develop and innovate uh, in wind energy technology. And so it explores the series of partnerships um, across firms, um, between firms, universities, research institutes, as well as um, between uh, foreign-owned and, and Chinese-owned firms. And what, what you find is just a really complicated web of uh, relationships, um, of uh, skilled labor moving uh, across borders and between firms. And this, uh, in particular, um, the, the way that uh, a lot of emerging economy firms, uh, including Chinese firms, have been able to tap into these global learning networks or these global bases of knowledge in, in wind power development have played a particularly important role in uh, transferring uh, a technical capacity to these companies. Um, so, uh, of course, the intellectual property that has moved across borders has also been extremely important. Um, but in many ways, you see that uh, Chinese companies are moving away from uh, a direct model of licensing intellectual property, uh, you know, a, a sort of single, a single blueprint of a, a certain wind turbine design, for example, um, and increasingly moving towards a more sophisticated model of working with uh, foreign partners to jointly innovate and develop new models of uh, wind turbine technology. And I think this has important implications going forward as we think about um, how we can cooperate with China to develop other low carbon technologies that we're going to need going forward. I think we see a lot of really exciting uh, things taking place, um, both through official bilateral channels, for example, between the U.S. government and the Chinese government uh, to develop uh, new clean energy technologies, not just to share policy experiences and um, deployment experiences like we've seen very much in the past, but really to um, bring together researchers uh, in laboratory environments as, along with private companies to innovate and, and develop uh, new clean energy technologies. As the government in China starts to recognize not only the environmental challenges that it's facing, which of course have been increasingly severe uh, in recent years, but also um, they recognize that uh, getting into the clean energy technology industries is strategic industrial policy, and this is actually something that is highlighted in the 12 five-year plan, uh, 
uh, where many of the, the new and renewable energy industries have been targeted for, uh, for support by the government. Um, and this is really translated into uh, very successful industries in China, not just within the Chinese market, but increasingly globally as well. I think that uh, what we can really learn from the wind energy case ha tells us about the uh, the viability of uh, leapfrogging to low carbon energy technologies uh, within China and the the models that have been used um, not just to acquire the technology and innovate uh, domestically uh, but also to deploy uh, this technology uh, throughout the country have been extremely effective and this is something we're already starting to see in other industries as well um, so I do think that this you know as the the book illustrates China was essentially able to go from um, having no wind power technology, no capacity uh, to innovate in this sector, um, and within a decade uh, to be able to develop state-of-the-art uh, advanced wind turbine technology, and they are now the largest uh, user of wind energy in the world. But one thing we see in the, the wind energy sector in China is the role that uh, Chinese manufacturing in this industry has been able to play in driving down the cost of this technology, not just for the Chinese market, um, but this has uh, important implications for access to this crucial low carbon technology for countries around the world. Um, we've seen uh, time and again as China enters low carbon technology industries, they're able to bring to these industries a manufacturing scale that uh, results in learning and cost reductions and makes this a more affordable technology uh, for all. And this will be particularly important um, as other developing countries and emerging economies look to um, also transition to a low carbon economy.